This video is sponsored by Manscaped. It is, without a doubt, one of my favorite sayings in hockey. Steve Iserman, Detroit wins. And I think if you're a Red Wings fan, you kind of know where that comes from. But we had ourselves yesterday some more news that I actually didn't cover here on the channel when it happened, which is totally my bad because I chose to leave that topic for today's video because it kind of plays in to a bigger overarching idea. But we had ourselves the Philipronic re-signing, Detroit's biggest point guy last year, and minutes-eating puck-moving defenseman, is signed to a three-year contract till 2024 with an AAV of $4.4 million. Now, he will be an RFA at the end of this contract, he's 23 years old right now, and he is, as we noted, the top point guy on the team, quite literally. If you take a look at the stats over here for Philip Peronic, 23 years old, he is 6 feet 183, and he's a guy who, in 2021, was able to put up 26 points in 56 games played, 2 goals, 24 assists. The year before that, he had 31 points in 65 games played. He has been a pretty consistent point-producing defenseman ever since debuting with the team in 2018-19. He was always really good at producing in the OHL and the AHL as well, so seeing this level of success for Hronik at the NHL level certainly isn't surprising. However, locking him up till he's 27 years old, pretty much until the peak of his prime, I guess, at a $4.4 million AAV, hey, I like that a lot, I think it's a really good contract right here, Red Wings fans like this a lot, sure, some are saying maybe we could have gone longer because we do know how good Hronik has been and how good we think he's going to be, but still. Three seasons long, cannot complain, especially at that dollar amount. He can most definitely outplay this contract as soon as next season, especially when you have more at Sider taking on those significant right side minutes as well. Philip Ronick is no longer going to be the guy logging in every single offensive start anymore because, hey, you'll have Sider there to share the load. He can also get on big minutes too, so it's going to be really nice seeing that right side defense distribution heading into next season. But, Philip Hronik and his contract aside, I wanted to talk about the rest of the Red Wings and the way their team is organized here. Because, as I said at the beginning, Steve Iserman, this was a win for him. It's a contract that looks really good, it could be seen as a lot more valuable than we see on paper as soon as next season, and if you take a look at the way the Red Wings are structured, Steve Iserman has really made everything align just really well, and a lot of that has to do with the length of the Philip Hronik deal. You take a look at Philip Ronick and his three-year contract, it goes on until 2024. He is the longest tenured Red Wing in the system in terms of contracts. There are only two other guys who also reach 2024. Their names are Jakob Vrana and Michael Rasmussen as well. These three guys are the only players the Red Wings have signed after 2023, and their cap hits at 4.4 for Ronick, 5.25 for Vrana, which is very good by the way, and 1.4 for Rasmussen, they're all fairly serviceable contracts. Everybody else on the Detroit Red Wings, Larkin, Bertuzzi, Suta, Fabri, Ernie, Nemesnikov, they all either expire in 2022 or in 2023, with a boatload of the defense actually expiring in 2022. What this allows Steve Eiserman to do is really have just the most flexibility with his team possible. He's not going out there and paying Franz Nielsen anymore. He's not paying Justin Abdelkader anymore, and these contracts are not holding down the Red Wings. We noted how smart the Franz Nielsen buyout was because Steve Eiserman took full advantage of his second buyout window that was granted to him, and they used it to free up some money as well as remove what was a really bad contract in the system. Abdelkader was bought out almost a year ago too, so it's been a long-term plan here for Stevie Y. But when it comes to the way this team is organized, he really has the most flexibility here. Now before we go over how exactly that is and what exactly makes this so valuable, a big word from our sponsor of today's video. Attention gamblers of all shapes and sizes. Our friends at Manscaped have a can't-miss bet for you today. The leaders in male grooming have just launched their fourth generation performance package. The betting odds are in your favor when you use the Lawnmower 4.0 on your family jewels. Are you ready to take the leap to male grooming royalty? 2 million men already have. Join the Manscaped movement by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code LEGOROCKS. If you want my personal recommendation, the Performance Package 4.0 is the ultimate parlay to take your grooming experience to the next level. 
It includes the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents, plus a 4000K LED spotlight. Did I mention it's waterproof too? The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker, their very own nose and ear hair trimmer, as well as their ball deodorant and toner. It also comes with boxers and a travel bag. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code LEGOROCKS at Manscaped.com. That is the code LEGOROCKS at Manscaped.com today. Jumping back over to the Red Wings here, hello, how are you doing? The reason this kind of roster structure is extraordinarily valuable is because it gives you so much flexibility. We already noted this, but the Wings are not going to be hampered down by any bad long-term contracts that are on their books from the Ken Holland days. You have yourselves Iserman, who is going out there and really making this team his own, and you could tell that the way this team is going year by year, this offseason, next offseason, the offseason after that, Steve Iserman will have so many options to either say, okay, Fabri, you were good, but not good enough. We're cutting you. Sorry. Letty, we like you. You're sticking around. Here you go. There's a big contract. He has that opportunity to really just make or break an entire Detroit Red Wings roster at his fingertips based off of the conversations he has with these agents and these players as well as how they play. You ever play NHL GM mode and you realize that sometime earlier in the timeline, you accidentally re-signed too many big contracts at once and you're like, man, I really need to buy these guys out. I really can't do what it is that I want to do. I can't keep the players who I want to keep because I have so much extra money tied up in players that I don't care about anymore. That happens all the time, especially if you're as generous as I am and like handing out eight-year deals to everybody on your team who does remotely well in the potential hope that they become fantastic elite players and they outperform the contracts, but Steve Eiserman is doing the complete opposite here. He's not overpaying guys who are shades of what they could be in the future and saying, all right, we hope you outperform this contract in 2026. He's saying, okay, you're good, Jakob Vrana, but we don't want to go long term. The way we want to build this team, we want to see year by year how good we are and how good we're projected to being with the prospects, with the younger guys, and the development of the guys on this team. So by the time 2023, 2024 rolls around, we don't know if we'll still be on the same path then that we project we're going to be now. We don't know how good Raymond's going to be. We don't know how good Edvinson is going to be. We don't know how good Berggren or Cider or any of these guys are going to be. And we don't know how good you're going to be either. So all of the planning that we have, who's to say that it's going to go exactly the way we project it to be? Therefore, Verona, you're great. We'll give you a three-year deal. Can you take 5.25? And he's like, okay, I like Iserman. I'll say yes. Iserman himself is building this team in the way that he knows how to build a hockey team. And trust me, he knows how to build a hockey team. He kind of did that with the Tampa Bay Lightning and Team Canada in 2014. Sure, there was the entire Martin St. Louis always left off the team, even though his GM is the guy running the team controversy that happened back then. But still, Iserman knows how to build a team. He's going out there with full control over everybody in this process. And it's why you won't find any Red Wings fans who are, at any point upset or frustrated with Stevie Y. It's kind of a great little revitalization for me, I guess, being a part of the Red Wings fan base and talking to Detroit fans and just acknowledging the work that Stevie Y has done, because all the fan base over there is completely on the same page. They're like, yeah, okay, patience, we're a rebuilding team, Stevie Y is building this team the way that he wants, we don't know how good they're going to be in two years or three years or four years, which is why him going short-term in these contracts is extraordinarily valuable, and we're willing to wait. We had 15-something years of playoff success and Stanley Cups and all that, with late-round steals and Datsuk and Zetterberg and all these legends that made their way over to Detroit. We had success for so long, we can wait a little bit for us to be good again, and Stevie Y being the guy at the handle, hey, he's doing an extraordinary job. As a Vancouver Canucks fan, it's refreshing to be a part of those conversations because I can tell you here in Vancouver, like, it's 50-50 on Jim Benning. Like, half the fan base is extraordinarily against this guy and they want him fired. And it's kind of funny because the other half of the fan base is so ardently on the other side that Benning can do nothing wrong because he drafts well. And furthermore, who's to say he's even drafted well in the past, like, two drafts, I guess you would say. I get it, Pud Colson is nice, and I get it, Yoni Yermo is a nice, interesting pickup, but still... Actually, you know what? I think I'm hyperbolizing it a little bit. Maybe it's not 50-50 that half the fan base is super against spending, half the fan base is super for it. Maybe it's like 25-25, and then the remaining 50% is diverged into less powerful 
groups that kind of align on a similar scale. It's strange here in Vancouver, and it's so refreshing seeing the Red Wings fan base go out there and praise the heck out of Iserman because the man can do no wrong over here, and even if he does make a decision that people scratch their heads at, there's always that benefit of the doubt. Okay, it's Iserman here, he might have a plan, he knows what he's doing, and for the most part, it pays off most of the time. So, talk to me in the comments what do you think about the Detroit Red Wings and the way their system is structured, how Stevie Y just keeps on going out there getting dub contracts over here, re-signing his players to cheap deals that are long enough that we can actually see some good value out of the contracts, but short enough to still give a lot of flexibility to the way this team is assembled if two, three years down the line we don't really align in the same way that we thought we would. Iserman is doing his thing, and with this Philip Peronic signing, it's the next one in a series of really good contracts, in my opinion. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think about this entire process over here? Am I right? Do I have a point, or am I just kind of talking out of my behind? Because that definitely is an option, too. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 9 and bye.